गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू लक्षा अकाडमी यूट्यूब चानल ए वे आफ् अंडर्स्टांग द कॉन्सेप्ट आफ् कंडक्टर्स इंसुलेटर्स एंड सेमी कंडक्टर्स यूजिंग एनर्जी बैंड्स इन एनर्जी बैंड्स इन क्रिस्टल इन सॉलिड्स एनर्जी बैंड कैन बी मेड अप आफ हय्यर कंडक्शन बैंड्स आक्युपाई बै कंडक्शन एलेक्ट्रॉन्स these conduction electrons can free to free to move and the lower valence bands can be occupied by valence electrons these valence electrons are tightly bound to the atoms so they cannot move in the case of conductors valence band and conduction band overlap with each other there is no gap between valence band and conduction band so the number of available free electrons is more in the case of insulator there is large gap between valence band and conduction band even though if we we give some energy uh, the electrons present in valence band unable to move to the conduction band so the free electrons in the conduction band is uh, negligible so there is uh, uh, no current in the case of a semiconductor there is a small gap between valence band and conduction band so by giving a small amount of energy to it uh, the electrons present in valence band may able to jump to the conduction band so in that case the number of free electrons available in the conduction band increases so conduction increases so by giving small amount of energy electrons can able to jump to the conduction band so the deficiency of electron in valence band is called as holes holes has no physical significance when a potential difference is applied across the semiconductor the holes and electrons can move in opposite directions so in semiconductors the conduction is due to both electrons and holes as temperature increases the resistance of semiconductor decreases conduction increases because electrons jump to the conduction band semiconductors germanium and silicon are the best examples of semiconductors and the forbidden energy gap for silicon is about 1.1 electron volt and for germanium 0.74 electron volt according to ncert book uh, for germanium it is 0.72 electron volt students understand that so better to write uh, about the forbidden energy gap is about 0.7 electron volt that is good because uh, it depends on uh, several factors so next uh, today our topic is types of semiconductors uh, that is pure semiconductor and uh, impure semiconductor pure semiconductor is also named as intrinsic semiconductor and consider germanium atom the atomic number of germanium is 32 and the valency of germanium is 4 so germanium is ready to form four covalent bonds with neighboring atoms forming a germanium crystal when some amount of heat energy is given to the germanium crystal the covalent bond breaks and electron left from that so uh, the deficiency of electron is called as hole and students observe that in the diagram a uh, red dotted lines gives that uh, break breaking of uh, covalent bonds so when some amount of energy is given the electrons can jump from valence band to conduction band 
so the number of free electrons available in conduction band increases because there is a small gap so more number of electrons can able to jump from valence band to conduction band so in the diagram i mention all the points of free electron holes and broken covalent bonds and covalent band and valence electrons so in pure semiconductor current flow is due to both electrons and holes and in pure semiconductor the number of electrons present in the conduction band is exactly equal to the number of holes present in valence band not down that the number of electrons present in conduction band is exactly equal to the number of holes present in valence band in the case of intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor the atomic number of silicon is 14 and germanium is 32 and ni is a concentration of electrons and np is a concentration of holes so ni equal to pi so ni and rpi is referred to as intrinsic carrier concentration so to a pure semiconductor when an impurity is added that process is called as doping and there are different types of uh, doping methods of doping and uh, heating of a crystal in the presence of dopant atoms or adding impurity in the molten state or bombarding semiconductor by the ions extrinsic semiconductor or impure semiconductor there are two types one is n type semiconductor and the second one is p type semiconductor first we discuss n type semiconductor consider pentavalent impurity arsenic its valency is 5 so it it is ready to form five covalent bonds but the valency of germanium is 4 so four free electrons are shared and another free electron is available and here the impurity is ready to donate the free electron so these are called as donor impurities pentavalent impurities are also named as donor impurities a small energy level formed uh, just below the conduction band that is donor level in n type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are electrons and minority charge carriers are holes so the number of electrons present in conduction band is more than that of the number of holes present in valence band in the case of germanium the energy required to det detach the that fifth free electron is about 0.045 electron volt as a thermal agitation if we give a little bit of amount of energy the fifth electron may detach the majority charge carriers in n type semiconductor are electrons and minority charge carriers are holes the number of electrons present in conduction band is more than that of number of holes present in valence band
n and p represent the electron concentration and p represents the hole concentration so n into p equal to n i into p i where n i is intrinsic carrier concentration and p i is also intrinsic carrier concentration so n into p equal to n i square p type semiconductor consider trivalent impurity trivalent impurity means it has a valency of 3 indium the valency of indium is 3 so it has 3 free electrons it is ready to form 3 covalent bonds so it may be bonding with uh, free electrons of germanium and forming uh, 3 covalent bonds and uh, here there is uh, lack of uh, one electron so it is ready to the impurity is ready to accept one more electron so trivalent impurities are called as donor imp acceptor impurities sorry trivalent impurity is named as acceptor impurity the hole is associated with the positive charge moving from one position to another position so this is called as p type semiconductor and the acceptor impurity produces energy level just above the valence band this energy level is called as acceptor energy level so in the case of p type semiconductor majority charge carriers are holes and minority charge carriers are electrons in intrinsic semiconductor the number of holes is always equal to number of electrons but in extrinsic semiconductor it varies in n type semiconductor number of holes greater than that of holes in p type semiconductor number of holes greater than that of number of electrons so conductivity is greatly increased in the case of intrinsic semiconductor extrinsic semiconductor so conductivity greatly increased in the case of extrinsic semiconductor that means impure semiconductor so doping the semiconductors with impurities increases the conductivity so that is the important concept the average energy level of conduction electrons and holes is called as a fermi energy level in the case of pure semiconductor the fermi energy level lies exactly in between the valence band and conduction band but in the case of impure semiconductor and in the case of n type semiconductor the fermi energy level shifts towards the conduction band and in the case of p type semiconductor the fermi energy level shifts towards the valence band okay just students finally when an impurity is added to a pure semiconductor extrinsic semiconductors are formed there are two types of extrinsic semiconductors one is p type semiconductor and second one is n type semiconductor when a trivalent impurity is doped to a pure semiconductor a p type semiconductor can be formed when a pentavalent impurity is doped to a pure semiconductor n type semiconductor can be formed okay students